Welcome back to Mastering Money on Money Radio, where financial success is not only possible, but highly attainable. I'm Sinclair No, and today is Monday, Steve taking a quick break, but our bench is deep, and stepping in for Steve, one of the nation's leading precious metal experts, Mr. Nick Grovich with American Federal Coin and Bullion. Nick is a published author, also a familiar voice here on Money Radio. He's the host of Good as Gold every Thursday afternoon in the 1 o'clock hour. Nick, good to see you again. It's great to be here as usual. Uh, I wanted to go back to some news from last week, Nick. Okay. The Volkswagen uh, scandal that broke. Right, right. And I'm sure by now everybody knows the basics. They were rigging the software in their diesel cars. They'd right. been selling these diesel cars for years as a clean alternative. Right. And they were rigging the software so that when the cars were tested for emissions, it would kick into a different kind of mode and wouldn't spit out as much pollution. You get back on the road, all of a sudden it's throwing out 40 times nitrogen oxide right, levels. Right, right. Big, big problem. And somebody's probably saying, well, what does that have to do with precious metals? That's what I would have said two weeks ago. <laughs> but, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, but we know that there are precious metals that are used in automobiles on a very regular basis. Well, that's right. Platinum, palladium, even rhodium are used in different types of catalytic converters. And we've talked about that before when we talked about platinum and palladium. Right. And so with the Volkswagen, with the Volkswagen scandal, um, it really it really got down to the differences in the different catalytic converters. Apparently, the platinum is used more in gasoline engines, while palladium is used more in the diesel engines. And the feeling now is that the whole diesel engine marketplace, is being tossed into question. Right. They're, they're thinking now, of course, as most people, well, I don't know if most people know, but in Europe, they use a lot more diesel engine engine cars. I'm not sure I said that right, but yeah. diesel-powered cars than they do in the United States. It's primarily diesel. And so the psychology is that they will uh, they will start cutting back on diesels and going more towards gasoline engines. Or electric or hybrid or Or electric whatever. or hybrid, right. Yeah. Right. And so that would, I guess the psychology is that would be bad for platinum because it's fewer platinum catalytic converters and uh, more use for palladium in the gasoline engine converters. And it had a huge effect on the, both the platinum and palladium markets. I was actually pretty surprised by how, how, uh, how big the moves were. There were some big moves with palladium moving up significantly, platinum I, down a fair amount. Right, that's and, right. And platinum's already fairly low. We've talked about this in the past. We've talked about platinum quite a bit. Um, you know, platinum last week was about $200 less than gold, which is extremely, extremely cheap if you look at, at where it's been in the last 40 years. And uh, the funny thing is, if you look at the ratio on palladium, palladium actually looked expensive compared to platinum, but when this happened, you know, palladium was trading well below six hundred dollars, and it went up to about six hundred and sixty-five dollars, which was a huge move for a couple of days. That's a very big move for a couple of days. So, is this any idea on this as a trend? You know, I'm really surprised that just on the psychology of the move, I don't think anybody actually bought any palladium or bought or sold platinum. I mean, that probably happened on paper. I'm sure a lot of contracts traded, but I don't think anybody took delivery of any huge amount of palladium, and I don't think anybody dumped thousands or millions of ounces of platinum on the market. But uh, it was a big move. So um, I suppose I suppose if that trend would catch on in Europe, it, it would change uh, the relative value of platinum and palladium. But I would think that would take years to actually affect the physical market. We think of platinum in particular, right. uh, maybe a little bit less so palladium. But platinum, we don't really think of it that much as an industrial metal. It's a precious metal. It is, but it's it's primarily an industrial metal. Um, from what I've read, only about ten percent of what they mine goes to investors. The balance is used in industry. So, so you know, if they get in a jam where they need 
metals like i mean this is one of the reasons i like these metals um if they get in a jam where they need the platinum or palladium there's really no storehouse of it even even if it gets to a price where it's worth investors selling if they're only buying 10 percent of what's produced every year there's just not that much there's not that much left to dump on the market this is a very small market for those metals it's very small. Platinum's 30 times more rare than gold, so they, they just don't mine that much of it. There's no way to increase the amount they get out of the ground. And right the now. mining, as we've seen on uh, several of the precious metals, even copper, we've seen a lot of mining firms that have cut back production, closed That's right. mines. That's right. I, uh, I had a seminar in South Phoenix last week, and one of the gentlemen there is involved in mining. And he was explaining, he's involved more in copper mining, but he was explaining that what happens, it's the same in, in, in any metal, but what happens is as, as the price goes down, they don't really close the mines down. They get a skeleton crew. They keep the mines going. They don't want to do the cleanup they have to do to close a mine down. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was really interesting talking to him because he was explaining how they just basically cut cut supply down to near zero and keep the mines going and that almost in itself if when you you multiply that by however many mines are out there stops the supply and gets the the price to move back up and then they're all set to, to go back into um, production once the price goes up but the problem with platinum and palladium they can only increase it so much there are limits they're very very, very small markets limits. yeah, yeah. You mentioned uh, palladium and even rhodium. Rhodium. We don't think too much about those markets. Most people don't go beyond gold and silver. Most people, you're right, most people think of gold and silver, and uh, some people are familiar with platinum. When you start talking about palladium and rhodium, uh, you know, people look at you with uh, kind of a glaze in their eyes and so not really are there, sure what it is. Are, are there coins? Is there bullion? Uh, platinum and palladium you can buy in bars, one ounce, ten ounce bars. You can also buy certain coins. Um, Canada actually there are makes platinum coins. There's platinum coins, United States, Australia, um, Isle of Man, Canada. Um, they all make platinum coins. Uh, palladium, Canada actually makes a palladium maple leaf. And the U.S. for years has been toying with the idea of making a palladium uh, eagle, but they've not pulled the trigger on it. When you get to rhodium, uh, rhodium's a little different. Uh, they make one-ounce bars, and maybe 10-ounce bars, but one-ounce bars are about all we see in rhodium. Rhodium used to be one of those metals you could not trade in. Uh, it used to come in a vial, and it was in powder form, so it was very difficult to, to <laughs> trade. It was very, very difficult to trade rhodium. Uh, really. But platinum is still uh, very tradable. Platinum and palladium trade just like gold and silver. You can you can buy whether you buy the bars or the coins. It's a commodity. They trade in a daily market. Like I said, just like gold and silver, you can you can call on the phone and buy or sell in a moment's notice. And I have a question about uh, some of the trading that was going on this past week, and we'll get sure. to that as we continue our conversation. But if folks would like to contact you if they have questions about gold, silver, platinum, palladium, whatever it might be. Uh, you can always get in touch with Nick Grovich at American Federal Rare Coin and Bullion in Carefree. The phone number, 800-221-7694, 800-221-7694, or check out the website, AmericanFederal.com, AmericanFederal.com. Dot com. Money Radio, thanks for joining us. We're talking with Nick Grovich from American Federal Rare Coin and Bullion, the website AmericanFederal.com. Nick, of course, is uh, the author of The Big Lies and Absolute Truth. In the rare coin markets. Yeah. You, rare coin and bullion markets. Yes. Do you have a couple of those books? We have a few of those books. I'd can, be glad I, to give a few gifts away. Yeah, let's do that. All uh, right. Three or four? Let's go with four. Let's go with four. Four books. Uh, the Big Lies and Absolute Truth About Rare Coins and Bullion. Right. Okay. Next, uh, four callers at 800-221-7694. 800-221-7694. That's the number at American Federal. 800-221-7694. You also still have the uh, booklet, a little pamphlet that you put together. About uh, platinum. About platinum. Is right. platinum perfect for you? I think that's that's a perfect booklet for anybody looking to uh, 
You know, if you're thinking about platinum or you just want some more information, some more information to make some decisions about it, I think it's a great, even though I wrote it, I think it's a good booklet. There's it a is. Lot of I facts learned in from there. it. I learned from it. It was good stuff. And it's, it's, all, it's all information I put together when I myself was looking at platinum. I was looking at the uh, difference between platinum and gold, and I got interested. And the deeper I dug, the more I found out and decided to share that with my clients. Okay. So if anybody would like a copy of the booklet, Is Platinum Perfect for You? 800-221-7694, 800-221-7694, and the next four callers get a copy of your book as well. Absolutely. I was asking you about uh, the trading that got a little bit wild this past week in precious metals. Right. And I remember seeing last week, uh, we had a day where gold was up, uh, platinum and palladium were just moving all over the place. Right, right. And and you were telling and you were just saying, it's probably just the the speculators. Nobody's actually taking physical delivery. Right. But we were seeing these ETFs, and there are leveraged ETFs. Right. Right. And inverse leveraged ETFs. I saw the inverse leveraged gold ETF. I think at one point, it was down about fifteen percent in one day the other day. There's some big moves. I mean, you know, back back when I started in the business, we didn't have ETFs. You didn't have it was all based on physical trades. And today, you know, as we were talking about platinum and palladium, I doubt very much that any big trades happened uh, either buying or selling platinum or palladium, yet we had huge moves in the marketplace. And you know that was all on paper. It was all through ETFs or futures. And it really makes me wonder about what they're really trading. Are they really trading precious metals or are they trading just paper i think they're just trading paper even even uh when gold went up 25 dollars last thursday um you know i i'm always trying to figure out why it moved the dollar was down slightly but there was there was no big news out there that really should have uh moved gold that that much um i think a lot of it was just short covering and and things like that so it was all paper trades but it really affects the price of the metals does it affect the supply demand equation in in any particular way and and what should folks think about that well the thing and we talked about this before the thing you have to really be careful about is you know that the price the price changes based on these paper trades And it doesn't always reflect what's actually available in the marketplace. So when the prices are too low, and I say too low, that means I can't buy physical product, the premium on it goes up. And the premium is that amount over the value of the metal. So if you're on a Silver Eagle, for example, if spot silver is $15 and you're paying $21 for a Silver Eagle, you're paying a $6 premium. And so even though the spot price is low, the actual cost of buying some of these items has really gone through the roof. So when you see some big moves in the ETFs and in those markets, the speculators are pushing the prices around. Are you able to to track or anticipate what that does to your premiums in the physical market? A, a lot of times, if like you said, if it's just paper that's moving the prices, the actual physical price doesn't change as much simply because the premiums adjust to what's, ava- what's available physically for people to actually put their hands on and either sell or buy. And, and we've talked at length about uh, premiums. What are you seeing as far as premiums in physical markets right now? The premiums on a lot of the platinum items, whether it's bars or coins, is, is slightly higher than normal. Uh, a lot of the silver items are really very high right now. In fact, last week at the seminar, I had a client who uh, he had some old silver half dollars. The, we call it the 90% silver, the yeah, junk right. silver. And the premium is so high on the junk silver half dollars right now that we were able to sell, it comes in a bag, a bag's a thousand dollars face value, but the premium was so high, I was able to pay him over $20 an ounce for his half dollars. Wow. And then we turned right around and we bought other types of silver, just silver rounds, which are one ounce silver coins. Yeah. And we were able to buy those for $1.50 over spot. So he actually made $4.50 an ounce and still has the same amount of silver. So what he did is he just rolled it. We sold we sold his half dollars and we bought silver and he increased the amount of silver he had by nearly 30% just by playing the premium. So it, it, there's a lot of opportunities that come along sometime when these premiums start start uh, floating around. That's a very interesting move right there. And if you're 
if you're not really concerned about the form that you hold it in necessarily, right? You're looking for the actual metal itself. That's a, a nice little arbitrage, right yeah, there. Yeah, it's a it's a nice way to increase how much silver you have without spending any money. And, and it doesn't happen that often, but every now and then when these premiums are uh, getting out of their normal ranges as they are now, there's a lot of little things you can do with people. Uh, what about beyond the silver market? What kind of uh, premiums are you seeing or not seeing in gold and, for that matter, the platinum markets now? You know, the gold market seems to be a lot steadier. Um, they don't really use gold. Gold just seems to go from one pile. You know, they just change the name on the pile of gold. You know, it belongs to one person or one country, and they just change the card. So gold typically uh, doesn't react quite as much premium-wise. It might be up a quarter of a point. So it's not really it's not really substantial on most of the gold coins. You can still buy gold eagles, gold maple leaves. Uh, when you get to platinum, some of the premiums on some of the uh, platinum eagles, which you know. I was real hot on a, a year and two years ago. Some of those premiums are up over four hundred dollars an ounce. So you know, wow. pl- you're getting a forty, fifty percent premium on it. And again, if you don't have to have platinum eagles, you can trade in your or yeah, if you don't have to have platinum eagles, you trade in your platinum eagles and get forty percent more in platinum bars or platinum maple leaves. So you know, if you're investing, you don't really care the form of the platinum. You want more more ounces, and that's where you're going to make more money. So there's a lot of real interesting things you can do when the premiums move around like this. And, and we had talked uh, at a certain point there over the summer, it was really difficult to find the silver eagles, right? Right, and they're still very hard to find. If you pay enough, you can find them. Yeah, right. <laughs> With anything. Right, right. Yeah. But premiums on silver eagles, um, you know, normally they cost me two dollars and fifty cents to two seventy five over spot. Right now, they're cost me five dollars and more over spot. So, you're paying. I'm paying a twenty five percent premium just to buy the coin. Is is now a good time to buy? It, does that does that indicate that there is strong demand and? Yeah, might an- anticipate future direction of pricing. You know, I, I hate saying this <laughs> because I'm I'm in business to buy and sell, but um, when the premiums are this far out of out of norm, um, I probably for once would not recommend Silver Eagles right now. The problem is eventually the supply catches up, the mint starts cranking out coins, mm-hmm. and they catch up, and that premium will most likely return to normal. And then you've just given away three or four dollars in premium. So, right now, if I was buying silver, I'd look at some of the uh, some of the uh, alternatives like silver rounds or Australian one ounce rounds, something that normally maybe I wouldn't look at, but that you're not paying that extra three or four dollars an ounce for. You do understand, though, that this is why I like talking to you about <laughs> coins because I won't always tell you to buy something. Yeah, right. You, right. you give me the honest story, and frankly, I appreciate it. I really do because there may be some opportunities out there if somebody's holding on to something and they want to make that arbitrage play to increase their holdings or or do something with their holdings right uh, there may be a way to do it and you'll give them an honest answer absolutely um like i said usually i love silver eagles that's my preferred way of buying silver but when the price doesn't make sense we have to look at alternatives there are a lot of things going on and a lot of dealers out there right. will try and uh, sell you something based on fear or volatility. Absolutely. And it, frankly, it drives me a little crazy. Right. I do appreciate the straightforward, honest approach that you bring to the table, Nick. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I enjoy that you bring it to us uh, every Thursday as well on Good as Gold here on Money Radio. And if folks would like to get an honest evaluation of their coins, of their uh, metals portfolio, you can do that for them as well. Absolutely. Uh, just schedule an appointment. Just uh, give the office a call, schedule an appointment, and we can review what you have. I mean, if you have silver eagles or silver dollars or even right now silver half dollars, um, we can show you how maybe you can increase the amount of silver you have without spending any money. That's always a great way to – That's a great thing. It's a great way to go. That's the number at American Federal, 800-221-7694. The website, AmericanFederal.com, AmericanFederal.com, and uh, the offices are up in Carefree. 
on Easy Street. On Easy Street. Nick Grovich, American Federal Rare Coin and Bullion. Always a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you, sir. sir.